Davey or Riz that contacted you about this job? So what was your initial reaction when you heard about it? Well, it was funny because uh, we kind of knew, I found out that Joe was going to get the job with Philly uh, through Girardi and, you know, my ties with him. And I knew that would open up and Kevin had, had contacted me, wanted to know if I'd be interested in, and then Davey talked to me. So kind of worked out well. Pretty good opportunity to join a team that just won the World Series. I imagine that's a, oh, yeah. a good feeling. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. doesn't happen very much. Usually when there's changes made, it's because of uh, something bad. But <laughs> it just happened to open up, so it was good. How quickly did you say yes? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, Kevin and I go way back, so it's it's nice going back to work for him. And, you know, I'll be around to do whatever Davey wants me to do. So Philosophically, everyone's a lot of people are aware of Kevin wants ball in the air, pull side, power, those, those sorts of things. Where are you in aligning with kind of that launch angle theory and, and, and other things that are important to you philosophically? Well, I think it's something we've been teaching for years and years. You know, you're looking for a good pitch to hit and you want to drive it. And now it's launch angle and strike zone discipline. So uh, it's something we've been teaching for years. But, uh, you know, it's a pretty, pretty well-known fact that you look at guys' OPSs when they hit the ball on the ground and when they hit the ball in the air, and it's it's much more productive when you get the ball in the air. So, you mentioned having a relationship with Kevin that goes back a while. How do you two complement each other on coaching staff? Well, I think uh, after with my time with the Yankees, I was digging into analytics a little bit more, and I like that aspect of it. So, I used to I give dig in the guys every 10 days or two weeks and if I see something that's kind of standing out Kevin and I would talk about it uh, and he's really working in the cage with guys I do that too but I've got a little extra time to be able to to dig into some things a little deeper and maybe give him a heads up before something gets out of out of whack too far when you look at the team who do you think has the biggest upside going forward is it someone young like Victor Robles who we apparently only seem to scratch the surface what we saw last year. Well, I'm not getting painted into a corner naming a name, but it's going to be nice. <laughs> to, it's going to be nice watching these guys, and and I'm really excited to be able to watch Trey Turner after watching him on the other side for years, watching him on a daily basis. I haven't seen too much of Soto, but from what I've looked, I uh, did a deep, deep dive last week into some guys, and what I saw, I wrote "Wow" about six times on my comments. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> When you're coming to a staff that's been together um, and you're the new guy now, what's your balance of you know, injecting yourself and what you know but also sort of going slow and learning what they do? And I guess how do you sort of approach that? Well, you know, that's why I kind of did a deep dive into them analytically into their, uh, you know, their peripherals. So I got an idea, and then I, I talk with Kevin. Kevin and I talk all the time about hitters and what we're doing with them. And, uh, but from the staff, you know, I had Bobby Henley and Chip Hale as players aging myself here. <laughs> and I also had, uh, I've also coached with Tim Bogar uh, a while back yeah. too. So I know I'm very familiar with those guys. I got a lot of Henley stories for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't ask for this yet because that's probably a whole session. Oh, that's a long session. <laughs>